What's up guys, I'm Nathan from NextGen Tutorials and today we are reviewing the Xiaomi Mi 4i. Now, what's this phone all about? Well, let's have a look at the great design of this beautiful looking phone. Alright, so let's take a look at the design of the phone. Now, the first thing we notice when we pick up the phone is the front panel, actually, it's one solid big piece of glass. So it really looks beautiful. And when you hold it in your hand, it feels like you're holding one big screen. Now, on that big screen, you see the logo in this metallic texture, which looks pretty, pretty nice, not intrusive. You have the front facing camera and the speakers to make your phone call, which all look very minimalistic. They're nicely placed. Um, other than that, you also have the three front facing buttons. So the back, the home and the option button but those only appear when you open up your, uh, you unlock your, your phone or when you're using your phone. So when you close the phone, you see just one big glass panel, which looks beautiful, I must say. Now, the back panel, again, uh, I, I feel like they try to make it as minimalistic as possible because as you can see, it's one big white surface and the only things that are present on that back panel are the LED, a double LED, the camera, and what I think is noise reduction microphone. So when you're making a phone call and there's a lot of wind, the back panel microphone will actually try and reduce that when you're in your uh, phone call. Now, other than that, you have, again, that shiny metallic logo of the Mi. Uh, the big, big speakers on the back panel, I don't know if that's because they have big speakers or they wanted to make it seem like big speakers, I will show you uh, more about that later. And a little bit of information, made in China, they could have left that out for me, in my opinion. It, it would have looked so much nicer if, just, if it was just one big, beautiful back panel with, okay, the logo they can keep, but all the little extra text, get rid of that. But maybe, maybe it's necessary. Now, other than that, on the side of the phone, you have the two buttons so the volume button and the power button, which are very nicely placed, I must say, because it's very easy to actually click the power button. I don't have to reach up to the top or to somewhere I can't reach. And the volume buttons as well, very easy to, to reach. And they feel rigid. So that's something really important in a, in a phone, that the buttons feel rigid, that they don't feel too cheap. And that's something that they really did quite nicely. Now on the left side of the phone, you have Basically, you don't have any buttons. The only thing you have on the left side of the phone is the slot for your micro, um, micro SD card and the double SIM, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, and then there's the top, which is completely empty as, except, except for the, uh, you, uh, the headphone jack and the button that has the micro SD and the microphone. Now, one thing I must say about the button is that they didn't make the micro USB slot uh, in the shape of a micro USB. They just kept it rectangular, which I think looks really, really nice. It adds to the simplicity of the phone. I feel like they really did a nice job in making a simplicit phone. And yeah, I really like the design of the phone. So what about the pictures? Let's take a look at a few pictures I took. All right, so this is video footage taken with the MI4i. Now I am using image stabilization, so I don't know if that actually um, takes down the quality, but let's see how panning around goes. And up and down, oh, that's pretty fine. Let's see how the autofocus works. Oh, fun fact, it also has a slow-mo function, which works in HD, so not in full HD and a time-lapse function so if you're into that you don't even have to install an extra app 
And now for close by. Hmm. Let's see if I tap. Yeah, you have to tap. So the out of focus isn't very great. But I mean, if, if you don't mind tapping the screen to tell the phone where you want to out of focus, um, then you're going to be all right. So the audio is also from the phone itself. There is a bit of wind. So if you hear some hissing, uh, then that's the wind. If you don't, well, then that's a great uh, microphone. And the uh, back panel microphone is doing its, its job. All right, so that's it for the uh, camera video. All right, so before we take a look at how fluid the phone actually performs, uh, I want to show you guys some specs. So when we take a look, we see that we have a Snapdragon 64-bit octa-core processor. So that's a very, very good processor that you have there. It's a second-gen Snapdragon 615 CPU at 1.7 gigahertz per second. I mean, it's eight cores. That's more than my game, gaming PC has. Although that has nothing to do with the actual performance. It's just a very, very good processor. Second, we have two gigabytes of RAM, which isn't very much, but depending on what kind of ROM you have installed on your phone, it can either go fast or slow. But I must say, it felt very fluid. Uh, you won't be able to do too many things at the same time, but that's all up to you. Then we have the 16 or 32 gigabytes of flash memory. So that's, um, that's a bit of a downer for me because I would, okay, the 32 gigabytes would be fine, but the 16 I think is just not enough for everyone. Especially not if you have a Spotify account and you want to download a lot of music or when you go on vacation, it's gonna fill up quickly and you won't be able to take any videos or pictures. So if you're buying this phone, go for the 32 gigabyte flash, especially because you don't have a, a place for a micro SD card. Then the biggest part is probably the 3120 milliamps battery, which they claim will go on all day. The SIM slots, you have a dual SIM. That's also very interesting, especially if you want to travel. And what you should note, different with the MI4i to the MI4, is that the MI4i has 4G FDD LTE support and TD LTE support. So that's a really good upgrade if you want to make, uh, if you want to benefit from that fast 4G connection. It has Bluetooth 4.1, which is in my opinion, very good because if you have an older kind of Bluetooth, it might just be annoying when you try to connect your devices and it doesn't go as fluid as it should. Then it has the Wi-Fi display, Wi-Fi direct, dual band, 2.4 to 5 gigahertz, which is very good because most routers nowadays, they do provide 5 gigahertz of speed and a 5 gigahertz connection and you want to be able to um, benefit from that speed, of course. Now the sensors, we have an electronic compass, gravity sensor, light sensor, gyroscope, hall sensor, and proximity sensor. So a lot of sensors there. We have a GPS. So if you were wondering if this uh, budget phone has a GPS, it does. And it's quite good, I might, I might add. So let's take a look at how fluid the phone actually is. All right, so let's take a look at how the phone actually performs. So, Let's see how fast the camera opens. That's pretty fast. Uh, I must say, um, another note on the camera is that the autofocus really works very, very well, I must say. Um, okay, so let's look at the front-facing camera. Very fast, very easy. Just press and it even tells you your, your, your age. Now, guys, I know it says 32, but I'm not 32 years old, uh, just to make that clear. All right, so let's go back to the to the home page, and as you can see, this is the home page that uh, is built in by uh, the Xiaomi. And when we close the phone and open it back up, it's actually very responsive. So it's slide up to unlock or slide to the left for your camera, which opens pretty fast. Could be faster, but I mean, I wouldn't complain. Usually, I'm not taking pictures of stuff that well is uh, quickly gone. So when we slide up to unlock, it's very responsive, very quickly, very fluid. We go to the right, we see some more apps. 
Um, I do not like this launcher though, because it doesn't give you an app drawer. It, instead, it just puts it on your home screen like this. Um, I've installed Mayday 2, a game that we're just about to play. But before I show you that, I want to show you the buttons on the phone, actually the bottom buttons on the phone. As you can see, these buttons, they appear and they disappear. So that's really nice. Um, they come in softly and they leave softly. So you don't see the buttons when they're not there and you see them when you need them. So something I really like about the phone. Oh, another thing that I really like is actually the LED light. So I don't know how I'm going to show you guys that. But the LED light here, well, which you cannot see because it's not flickering. Maybe if I close the phone, no. So there should be a LED light flick flickering. And when we go on at the, looking at the games, for example, so let's go to Mayday. That opened up quite fast. I had it preloaded, I must say. But let's uh, start the game. The sound sounds really nice, actually. Uh, it's quite loud. I don't know if it's the loudest. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's that's really nice. I like the, the way that they make the sound appear and disappear. So I'm going to put that a bit softer. All right, let's start. And that's our plane here. It's actually very, and luckily we have a good viewing angel angle because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see this anymore. Um, it feels very fluid, I must say. So we're flying through the city and what the hell am I hearing? Oh, okay. I'm hearing dissatisfied customers. So it's pretty, yeah, it's, it's very nice. It's very fluid. Um, I would I wouldn't mind gaming on this phone. Just make sure that if you go to go game, you know you have the two gigabytes of RAM, which means that if you're going to check your mails, um, watch a YouTube video, da 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 da, this and that, and then play a game, make sure that all the previous apps have been closed down, so you can dedicate as much RAM as possible to that game that you're about to play. Otherwise, you might see some. Um, decreased performance, uh, which is not really what we want. So if we go in um, in our notes and check the keyboard out, I will make a new note. Uh, no, 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 no. I've installed SwiftKey because SwiftKey is a keyboard that is actually a bit more performance hungry. And as you will see, um, I'm swiping without any problem because this phone, oh my God, not with an F, phone, is very fluid. Yeah, see, no problem. That was very easy and fast. Oh yeah, about the memory. The memory that you get when we look at the specifications is actually, um, da -da -dum. okay, let's go to settings. Now I have installed this 61 um, megabyte game. And if we go to our memory and I took took a few pictures already as well. All right, so I'm not used to this. Uh, okay, storage to this menu because it's not the standard menu. But as you can see, the total is 12.77 gigabytes available 9.47 so that they say 16 gigabytes, but you know, guys, it's never true. Unfortunately, it's probably true if you would take off everything. And that means even the operating system, then you might have 16 gigabytes, but that's why I'm saying be very careful when you buy this phone and go for the 16 gigabyte model. I would definitely go for the 32 gigabytes model. Oh, and one more thing that I actually wanted to show you guys. So let's go in the gallery and check out the pictures and let's see how fast it actually loads. So that's pretty fluid, I must say. Yeah, that is. And if we go through the pictures, that's also very fast. Let me just put that in landscape mode for you guys. So as you can see, oh, that took a while. Yeah, so when you swipe very fast, it doesn't follow you quite as well as, for example, the, um, what was it, the S2 Plus. That did a very good job. This one doesn't do that great of a job, but that's just a minor issue, really, because all the rest goes very fast, opens very fast. And who knows, maybe, maybe if you use another app, it might go faster. It can all, it, there are so many variables um, playing here. So yeah, all right, that's, that's actually it for uh, the specs and the performance. 
So let's take a look at the summary of the phone. All right, so let's summarize the Mi 4i. Now, first of all, what we have is a beautiful looking phone that comes in five different colors. There's dark gray, white, bright pink, baby blue, and yellow, or at least that's how I like to call them. The front facing camera has a five megapixel, 80 degrees wide angle lens, which is, it takes beautiful pictures, I must say. The 13 megapixel camera on the back is a Sony Samsung camera which has a five element lens, 2.0 aperture, a two-tone flash, which makes uh, nicer pictures when you're taking pictures with your flash because it gives a warmer kind of light. Um, I must say the HDR is quite, quite, um, quite good and it can take 1080p video recordings. All right, so for our display, we have a five inch sharp GDI full HD display with 441 ppi pixels per inch that means if you're into virtual reality with your phone it's gonna give you a very nice image the colors look beautiful on this phone and it's i must say very bright so a very interesting and wide viewing angle screen now in the phone as i've said in the specs we have two gigabytes of ram 16 to 32 gigabytes of flash memory, uh, 3,120 milliamps all day battery, or at least all day is what they claim, a Snapdragon 64 bit octa core processor, which is amazing. It's for such a budget phone, they really put in a good processor. And it has dual SIM. So that's very useful if you like to travel. It supports 4G and it has a 4.1 Bluetooth um, connector and a GPS. So what is my opinion about the phone? Well, let's take a look. All right, so what is my opinion on the Mi 4i? Well, if you're looking for a budget phone and you're looking for a really good one with a good battery, a good camera, and a good front-facing camera, a bright screen with beautiful colors, and an octa-core processor, well, take a look at the Mi 4i. It's a beautiful looking phone. It works great. It's cheap, it has, well, I mean, it has everything you would be looking for if you're looking for a good phone, but you're not looking to spend $800, $800 like you would on, for example, the Galaxy S6 Edge, or even more. In Belgium, you can pay up to 1,065 euros, which is, let's say, $1,100 for a phone. That's crazy. You're crazy, Belgium, but oh well. So. I would definitely recommend this phone and if you're interested go ahead and buy it you won't be disappointed i'm nathan from next in tutorials i hope you enjoyed this review if you did please leave a like and subscribe you know it would help me out a lot see you guys bye